Hello friends, my name is Marines, and today I'll be talking to you about some of the strangest books I've ever read. These videos about a variety of books under one theme or topic are my favorite to make. And this time I got the additional idea to pair it with a recommendations video. So I asked a bunch of friends to recommend a very strange book that they read. And at the end of this discussion, I will link you to that video. You can probably see it in your subscription feed if you are subscribed to me. I got the idea for this topic while I was reading Nothing by Jan Teller. The story is about a boy named Pierre Anthon who one day in the middle of the class realizes that life has no meaning and he just decides to sit in a tree because nothing matters and he starts to taunt his classmates who haven't yet figured out that life doesn't have meaning. A group of them come together with the goal of proving to Pierre and Vaughn that life really does have meaning. The premise itself seems pretty simple but it is the actions of the children and the lengths that they go to in order to convince their classmate and themselves that life truly has meaning that made it a very strange book. Now I know that strange or weird is a pretty broad term and that it can be applied in different ways. In this book in particular, I think the premise itself was a little bit strange, but it was the reading experience that truly left me feeling off balance. There's nothing scary that happens in this book per se, and yet I still couldn't read it right before bed because it always left me feeling pretty icky. Teller presents a question with her narrative, does life have meaning? And yet she doesn't try to answer that in any clear way with her story. What she gives us is an unraveling of events that speaks more to the lengths that these kids will go through to prove to themselves that life has meaning. In other reviews I saw this often compared to Lord of the Flies and I think that is right on. It is very existential and nihilistic and certainly was a book that left me asking WTF. Throughout this video there will be strange reads that I didn't like, some in the middle, and then some that I recommend for everyone to read. This one lands somewhere in the middle in that I think it was very skillfully done and it definitely makes you think and it's a book that I'm sure not everyone will like but I almost want everyone to read just so that I can discuss it with them. I would recommend it for people who enjoyed Lord of the Flies or for people who like very mood heavy reads or if you want a book that's gonna give you some food for thought. And this this one certainly provided that for me, so much so that I wanted to talk to you guys about it, but not only that, about other books that left me feeling in a similar way. On the end of books that I didn't like that are strange is a book that I rated one star and that is Shatter Me by Tahira Mafi. Now this book was written in a strange way on purpose. In the book we follow a main character who has some emotional and mental instability and the author chooses to convey that through her prose and the way that it's almost disconnected from reality. However, I think that the author tries to do that and did not do that and what she ended up doing was writing in such a strange way that it didn't let me enjoy the story at all and all, there were other issues with the book. I think that the plot was very flimsy and it relied too heavily on the insta-love and the romance that was going on. I only read the first book and I've heard over and over again that things happen in the series that make or recolor what happens in the first book and that almost makes me a little bit angrier but I'm not going into that. I think that this whole reading experience was also very strange for me because so many people love this book and the series and so I was reading something that was bizarre and then it was almost an additional layer of bizarre knowing that I was one of not a lot of people who didn't get the appeal here. Reading this was very much like digging through mud of flowery language to get to brief flashes of plot. Falling in the middle for me is The Motherless Oven by Rob Davis, which I rated three stars. Just trying to explain the premise of this is not the easiest thing in the world because it's just like a, a patchwork of things that just are about this world. So in this world, children create their parents, and so the parents are objects, and it rains knives, and everyone knows their death day, and we follow our main character whose death day is a few weeks away. And they've been told certain things about their society, and this kid starts to kind of question and challenge these things that he's been told all his life. That's more or less the premise, I think, but during my reading experience, I literally had to keep going back and reading the back of the book blurb because so many things are just thrown at you and it doesn't feel very cohesive. 
It is very imaginative and very well drawn. It was one of the first graphic novels that I ever picked up and it had moments of real wit and clarity but as a whole it felt very disconnected. I kept reading expecting to reach a point where it would all kind of come together and make sense but spoiler alert that doesn't happen. There are big philosophical questions that Davis presents throughout the story about whether or not we are made or if we make, about what the difference between living and being alive is, and there are those moments that I really enjoyed which is why I gave it three stars but this is seriously only a read for people who find pleasure in very very strange things like if you want to read something super strange it's not gonna have like a good satisfying ending where you kind of get what's going on Another three-star read for me was Homesick for Another World by Otessa Moshveg, and this is a collection of short stories all about normal people kind of doing everyday things, but in the most strange way. They're very strange portraits of these people, and I think that Moshveg is a really great writer, and this is something she obviously excels at. I read Eileen by Moshveg last year, and it was a story following this one character who's very unlikable, very very unstable and just had a very bad relationship with herself and with other people and that kind of feeling is broken up into short stories and put together in this collection. I'm gonna issue a content warning here because Moshveg really enjoys writing about people who are disgusted by their own bodies. The experiences of the human body portrayed in these stories are always portrayed in a negative way. It makes me consider the title of this collection, which at first gave me the sense of people kind of being out of place within their own lives and longing for something else, but I think it definitely touches on that feeling of being out of place within your own body and wanting something different than the experience that they are living in the package that they're living in. So it very much isn't an easy read. Entering the more positive side, we have a book that I rated four stars, and that is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. And this book is super trippy. It's a very short read and one that I would recommend. I think I mentioned this when I mentioned this book in another video, but one that I would recommend for a readathon because it is very short and it goes very quickly and you're so invested in trying to figure out what's going on. This story starts with a woman that is at her deathbed and a child is with her. Not her own child, but somebody that is trying to lead her through the events that kind of led her to this moment of being on her deathbed. This is another book where the title is very apt because it really does feel like a fever dream. I expected it to be more metaphorical in what it was doing. I expected a lesson almost at the end, like a, a deeper meaning, and it turned out to be pretty matter of fact in what it presented. If there was some kind of like deeper meaning, I totally missed it. A better rated graphic novel for this list is Beautiful Darkness by Fabian Vellman. I've mentioned this graphic novel several times on my channel and pretty much every time to talk about how weird it is. I recommend it easily even though I'm pretty sure half of everyone who could pick it up on my recommendation would probably then ask me what the heck I recommended them. But since it's a graphic novel and more easily consumed and because it is something that begs to be discussed and talked about and experienced, I just, it, it's another one of those that I'm like, read it mostly because I want your reaction to it. The book stories with an unidentified dead body that we don't get very much information about and suddenly the little people who also inexplicably live inside of this person come rushing out because they now need to find a new place to live. This book is very much allegorical and metaphorical and it really I think speaks to community and the lengths that we are willing to go to as people, as humans, for power and the dynamics between people. And this is also one that I would call a creepy read, but it's very disarming because it's presented in this gorgeous art and this almost watercolor-esque feel, very pastel. There were multiple times where I was reading this book and I stopped and questioned, did that just happen? Did did I, did I read that correctly? Did I see that correctly? And I would have to go back and like, oh, yep, yep that just happened. Next I have The Enchanted by Renee Denfeld, a book that I gave five stars to. I really, really, really enjoyed this, more than enjoying it because it is very dark and it is 
quite disturbing. I think it was beautifully written and conveyed and it said a lot about being seen and identity or on the opposite end of that the will to be forgotten and the will to have the things that you've done forgotten. This story is about a man on death row in an unnamed prison and in order to deal with his reality he's created another world and he sees things and senses things that other people don't. Through this story he is our narrator but it's very interesting because he almost becomes omniscient and he starts telling us about the priest and a lady who is an investigator at this uh, prison trying to get death row inmates off for, from death row. It's incredibly effective because it becomes so dark and so very heartbreaking to read these stories and I think the author did a very good job about being very ambiguous about what landed these people in prison in the first place. We don't relive very much of their past so you quickly become sympathetic to their plight in this unnamed prison and then to also your narrator and the things that he does and goes through to deal with what he's experiencing. Finally I have another strange five star read and that is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I spent a lot of last year going through gaming books for the very first time. I loved most of what I read, but his is a very unique style and it's super matter of fact. He just kind of states what everything is without going too much or worrying too much about backing it up or explaining it or or setting up systems to support the things that are happening in his book. And that is very much true in The Ocean at the End of the Lane. You guys know that I have all of the feelings all of the time always and this book was no exception. It left me feeling very sad about themes of growing up and the loss of innocence and the voices of negativity that we listen to as we get older. So even if you don't feel like the story is super strong, the plot is super cohesive, I think if you look at every everything that he's trying to say in smaller events. It really packs a punch and packages a lot of feelings. For more weird or strange reads, please check out the recommendations video which I will link on the screen and down in the description. If you've read any of the books on this list or are interested in any of them, let's chat down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys soon. There are phrases in this book that are burned into my memory and I'm not a very big memorizer of quotes or books or anything like that, but how could I ever forget things like vanilla regurgitation.